Well, there are so many fantastic cars in the marketplace, wherever you look, you think that's the car I want and then you look around the corner and then suddenly there's something else that looks even better. One of the cars I've driven recently I, and I was mightily impressed by it is a car that isn't here today but hopefully we might see more of in the future and that's from one of my old Formula One teams. It's the McLaren MP412C brand new road car project from the McLaren company who are of course responsible for McLaren Formula One success with Jensen Button, Lewis Hamilton and many many others and that is probably the most sophisticated road car I have ever driven and I drove it at Silverstone on the circuit and ordinarily a road car on the racetrack has got limitations but the sophistication of the suspension, the traction control, the anti-skid control is just mind-blowing that it's the nearest thing to a race car that I've driven as a road car on a racetrack. Well, obviously the two principal competitors to the McLaren will be the Ferrari 458 and the Lamborghini Gallardo. I mean, they're both great cars. I will be driving a Gallardo a little later today, so I'll give you an opinion on that. The 458, I'm still waiting for the opportunity. Certainly, it looks the nearest thing I can say to sex on wheels because it is drop dead gorgeous. And, you know, a lot of the perception of in a car of that nature is what does it look like? I mean, if it looks sexy, it's going to sell. And for sure, the waiting list for Ferrari for the 458 indicates that people like how it looks. How it drives, I'm sure, will be up to the standards of Ferrari. Performance wise, uh, likewise, it is mind blowingly quick. During my Formula One career, 152 Grand Prix, I, was, I won five races. By today's standards, not very many. Some drivers win five in a season, some win even more than that. In the 70s and 80s, winning a lot of Grand Prix was part of the occupational hazard of being a Grand Prix driver. But probably the one that stands out the most was winning the RAC British Grand Prix in 1981 for a variety of reasons, not least of all, it was my home Grand Prix. My family were there. So all the mys <coughs> come out. But equally, for McLaren as the company I was driving for, it was the first time carbon fiber technology, in other words, the chassis was a pure carbon fiber chassis, won a Grand Prix. And of course, I mean, I look at Formula One cars, look at other cars, in fact, on the road and other race cars. Carbon fiber is the only material that is used. It's the lightest and strongest material available. And that was the, my, that, was, that was my Chuck Yeager moment, let's put it that way. Winning in a carbon fiber chassis car, for the first time, that material, winning a Grand Prix, was a landmark for the company, for McLaren. For Ron Dennis, who was the team principal, still is the team principal in effect, winning his first Grand Prix was an equally important minute, moment, second, in his 30-year Grand Prix career. And, and, you know, history cannot rub that out. My name will be there as a very fundamental part of the history of the McLaren Grand Prix team. And I'm very proud of that. And I know that the McLaren team, I likewise, are very proud. Well, if you look at the modern Grand Prix car, it's, it's more technology center than it is a pure racing car. The cars of the 70s, the 80s, up until even into the early 90s were relatively straightforward cars with a normal clutch, a foot clutch, a normal gear change, a manual gear change, <clears throat> no power steering, no electronics whatsoever, very much more in the control of the driver. And for example, if you missed a gear change and you buzzed the engine, you might blow the engine up. Today with the electronic controls available, it's almost impossible to do that. So the reliability of modern Grand Prix racing is way beyond that of my generation in the 70s and 80s. And that's probably one of the significant changes. But likewise is that technology has, has grown and the extent of aerodynamics and just chassis technology and mechanical technology. These cars are 30 years down the road. And if you put it into the context of a road car, you look at a, uh, take a, a Ferrari 458, for example, and go back to the middle 70s when the car that was comparable at that time would have been a Dino 246. Beautiful little car, little baby Ferrari, but that's what it was. It had metal made, that was the worst metal in the world at the time, they all rusted. Great engine, but the reliability wasn't there. What you get today 
<clears throat> as with modern Grand Prix cars, is the reliability of the modern road car is infinitely better than it was 30 years ago. So far, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a walk in the park for Red Bull and Sebastian Vettel. Uh, he's been challenged in a couple of events, Turkey being one of them, and certainly at Monaco last weekend, he came under severe pressure, and arguably because of the, the red flag, uh, he was able then to make a tyre change, which was permitted under the regulations. That may be under review, by the way, and therefore uh, he won the race. I mean, Sebastian Vettel is, is a wunderkin. He's not quite 24. If you think back to when you were 24, certainly as I do, I was just beginning my international motor racing career. But he's already won a world championship. He's won 15 Grand Prix. He's going to go on and possibly eclipse even Michael Schumacher's 91 Grand Prix. I mean, it's just unbelievable to think another driver could achieve that level of success. But he is amazing. But of course, the key to Sebastian Vettel's success is in part his own ability and his, the way he goes about his business, but being in the right car at the right time with the right technical director, the right backup, the right funding, and Red Bull, who owned the team, Sebastian Vettel came through their young driver training program, so he has been a part of the Red Bull family for many years, and it, it just shows how important continuity is to a young driver's career these days. Well, I'm a big Michael Schumacher fan, and all I can say is, Michael, do it for the old ones, do it for me. I want you to win a Grand Prix. Whether it'll happen, I mean, it could happen in a, a wet, dry, dry, wet race, but I want to see Michael win a Grand Prix from pole position, lead every lap, get the fastest lap, and take 25 points, and then he can decide, I'm going to hang up my hat, I've proven that I can do it, and I'm happy to retire. I think until that happens, he will find it difficult to hang his hat up. Top three is probably easier, I mean, in no specific order. Juan Manuel Fangio, five times Argentinian world champion, magic, arguably, in my opinion, the greatest Grand Prix driver post-war. Ayrton Senna, who I knew, and in fact, last night did a radio broadcast about the Senna movie, which has just come out. Fantastic film, everybody must go and see it. Motor enthusiast, racing enthusiast, non-enthusiast, to get to understand the man, because sometimes the man didn't get his own inner feelings and expressions conveyed as well as they should have been. Thereafter, you can say, well, Michael Schumacher statistically is the most successful. Other drivers might be Jim Clark. Some people might say Alain Prost, four times world champion. I think the two that I've mentioned, Senna and Fangio, are clear in my mind. The third one I'm, I'm still working on. Um, I have to say, I haven't worked it out yet.